Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. A pan-African future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose to create and share opportunities to grow. brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. A pan-African future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. A pan-African future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. A pan-African future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Across Africa, a new era has begun.
shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose, to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. The Pan-African Future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose, to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. The Pan-African Future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose, to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. The Pan-African Future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Across Africa, a new era has begun. Shifting our focus to a new horizon, connecting us with the one purpose, to create and share opportunities to grow. Today, we are making a brighter tomorrow, built by our dreams and our energy. Across our continent, across the world, we are creating a better way to a better future. The Pan-African Future, together. Ecobank, a better way, a better Africa. Hello everyone, my name is Langpe Omoyele. I am Managing Director and CEO at Nitro One to One. And it's a pleasure today to share with you about 
segmentation, targeting, and positioning for SMEs. I believe this is a topic that is important for SMEs because many times when I ask SME owners, business leaders, about who their target market is, many people say that the target market is everybody. And I like to say that trying to be something to everybody in business is a recipe for failure, hence the importance of this topic. So let's go on to define what market segmentation is. It's essentially dividing a market into subdivisions of customers with similar characteristics, needs, or wants. So, for example, you could have a fashion boutique and you have customers that could be male or female, but you then choose to subdivide the market to focus on a male gender. You could also even focus on children from a business perspective. That in very simple terms is what market segmentation is about. And it's important to be able to segment markets and prioritize target markets because it then helps you to achieve your business goals a lot, a lot easier and therefore be able to apply the elements of the marketing mix, looking at your product development, looking at your pricing strategy, looking at your distribution strategy, and also your promotional or communication strategy. So why do you need to segment markets? Markets consist of various buyers and um, sellers and differ in, in various respects, and it is difficult for one size to fit all. Market segmentation helps focus and also helps you to target the appropriate segments of the market. And by appropriate targeting, what it does is that it enables you to tap into uh, customers who are more likely to pay for your products or services that appeal to them um, directly. And also, by understanding the different needs and wants of individuals um, in various segments, businesses can um, create targeted uh, products, create targeted communication for those various um, target markets. It also enables your marketing spend to be more effective as you look at your omni-channel strategy, that is uh, various channels that can address a particular segment of the market. So, for example, if your business is targeting um, Gen Zs, those who are between 18 to 25, you, you to enable you decide what kind of products will appeal to them, what kind of services will appeal to them, it will also enable you decide even um, more finely in, in terms of what communication platforms that you need to use to reach them, to communicate with them, and also in terms of the content of your messaging. That's a critical reason why you need to segment markets. Other reasons are that market segmentation helps to build customer loyalty. Customers are likely to be more loyal to brands that offer them personalization. Indeed, this is the age of personalization. And niche businesses tend to be more profitable than mass market uh, businesses because it's easier to drive higher customer loyalty and retention rates for your business. Another reason why you need to consider segmentation as an SME is that it improves your business focus. The more you know about the people that you are trying to serve, that are trying to offer your products and services to, the better the business decisions that you can make. And this applies to the inventory of your products, for example. It, it applies to your location, the locations that you might choose. And then also, um, when you segment the markets, you are better able to tailor your strategies to customer segments that can generate more profitable growth for your business. Other reasons why you should consider 
market segmentation is that it also enables you to develop your products. Segmentation is an ideal way to break the market down and know what will sell best to a critical market segment. When you have a clear understanding of your customers, you can create products that will better serve their needs and desires and meet their expectations. And then finally, it can also help you enter into new markets because segmentation helps your business to identify gaps in, in the market. So for example, you, because of segmentation, you may be able to identify a gap in the eatery um, business, for example, maybe perhaps in a location where there's no eatery or fast food. When you segment, you will be able to identify such, such gaps. So these are some of the reasons why it's important to segment your markets as, as an SME business owner. And let me repeat again that seeking to be something to everybody is a recipe for failure. So what are some of the steps in the process of market segmentation? The first step is to map the customer base that you have. And so you, you have a market and you're considering which of the customers you want to focus on. There's a principle called the Pareto Principle, which states that 80% that of your business is most likely to come from 20% of the most important customers. Let me repeat that. 80% or 70 to 80% of your business is most likely to come from about 20 to 30% of your customer base. And therefore, it's important to understand those customers that will give you the greatest um, franchise that will spend most money with your business. And so customer mapping is required first step. It's about assessing your current customers and also potential customers that can address and um, come to your business uh, to, to buy from you on an ongoing basis. And so when you map your customer base, it enables identification of their needs and wants and also understanding them and their motivations. So how do you go about customer mapping? There's a framework that you can use as a business owner. Six questions that you can ask, five W's and one H. The first is to understand who the user of your product is currently or your service is or who it could be. It's also important to understand who shops because your business might be used by someone who is not necessarily the shopper. For example, if you are making um, baby foods, you'll find that the user is the child, the infant, but the shopper is likely to be the mother. So it's important to understand who the shopper is and who the user is. There are also other buying roles as part of understanding your customer base. So aside from the user, aside from the shopper, there is also the influencer, those who are along the value chain, those along the purchase decision process can influence whether or not they should buy a product or service from you as opposed to another person who is selling a similar product or service. For example, if you happen to be selling diapers, an influencer could be those who are in the hospital setting, such as midwives. So you also want to understand them because they can influence your business. And it's also important for you to be able to reach out to them to grow your business. So understanding influencers is important. Also, also understanding those who take the ultimate purchase decisions, the decider, is important to know. And then um, we know the initiator typically is the person who is likely to use the product. So those are buying roles that you need to also understand as you are um, mapping your customer to understand the customer 
as you begin to consider market segmentation. You also need to answer the question of what they are buying. If they are buying products or services that are similar to what you are marketing, or whether they are products that are tangential or can be used as substitutes for your product or services. Understand why the market are buying why, what they are buying. If you are into drinks, why are they buying drinks? Is it for refreshments? Is it for therapeutic bases? Understand why they are buying. Also understand your customer from when they typically would buy the product, the when. There are some products that are seasonal, and seasonal in the sense that they are peak sales. For example, during Ramadan, you may find there are peak sales of cocoa beverages. You may find at times that purchase of products are more in the morning versus the evening. These are factors that you need to understand and take into consideration as you seek to understand your customers because that's, this will also enable you to tailor your marketing strategies, your business strategies for profitability and for growth. You also need to understand where your customers are and where they typically would purchase your product or services. There are some customers who buy only from the open market. If your product is one that thrives or can thrive in the open market, then you must ensure that your products and services are there. Some products may be bought mainly in supermarkets. Then it means your product must be there. Some products may be strictly online selling. For example, might be via Instagram. Then you need to ensure that you are active on Instagram. So understanding your customer, where they purchase typically from, is important as part of the market segmentation process. And then how do they purchase? Do they purchase on a daily basis, for example? Do they purchase on a weekly basis? You need to understand that. I, I have a friend who is a small business owner and sells water. And typically, people are buying water in bulk for their homes over the weekends. And so what he has done is to tailor the distribution, his delivery pattern, to be delivered on a weekend basis. So understanding how your customer base is buying also enables you to tailor your strategies, whether it be your product development, your pricing strategy, your distribution strategy, and enables it to be most, more cost effective. So answering these six questions is, is important as part of understanding your customer as you begin to build your market segmentation strategy. Having understood to a fair measure your customers, whether they buy um, products weekly for, or fortnightly, where they buy from, why they're buying those products or services, who they are, whether they're users or shoppers, you can then begin to build your segmentation strategy even further. And there are certain variables that you can use. The first one is geographic, which essentially is determining the market segment based on where they are. And therefore, you can subdivide your customers on a regional basis, or a state basis, or a city basis. So you can choose to say that I am dividing my market based on geography, location, and therefore, I'm looking at Lagos, for example, I'm looking at Abba, I'm looking at Kaduna, I'm looking at Meduguri. Those are ways in which you can um, segment the, the market. Now, while this is positive, we do realize that it, it does have its limitations because um, the fact that someone is in Lagos doesn't mean that everybody in Lagos has the same desires or wants. So, it's a first step in terms of segmentation, looking at location. 
But there are other steps that you can also consider as you build this market segmentation. So having identified location as a possible market segmentation strategy, it will also be important to look at the demography. That is looking at factors such as age, the gender, whether it's male or female, the socioeconomic um, class of the potential customers or the current customers, and other factors such as the education level, occupation, um, the ethnicity, because this also have um, bearing in terms of the strategies that you can develop in terms of your products, types, your pricing strategy. So for example, demography. If you are looking to address high in, higher income customers, then your pricing needs to be in line with what they are able to buy. You cannot say that your target market is low income customers and then your pricing is such that they cannot afford to buy. That's why it's so important that you segment the market and have an understanding of who your customers are or the prospects are because it enables you to take the right decision in terms of pricing, in terms of distribution, and in terms of your promotional strategies. So it's, that's why it's really important. And the demographic segmentation is quite easy to do in terms of collecting information. It's easy to measure and it's cost effective. So this is one that I would recommend that every SME certainly um, should consider. Look at segmenting along the lines of demography, along as well with um, understanding um, the geographic location. And then added to the demographic way of segmentation, you can also build this further by um, psychographic segmentation, which is based on understanding the lifestyle aspirations of your customers. The fact that a customer, a person, stays in Abuja, the fact that that same person stays in Abuja with somebody else, so there are two people who both stay in Abuja, both are female, so that is gender, both are about the same age of 30, both have a similar educational background, doesn't mean that their desires, aspirations, or lifestyle will be exactly the same or similar. And so while you have done your geographic um, segmentation, while you have done your demographic segmentation, it's also important to do a psychography looking at their lifestyle and their um, aspirations. And once you understand that, then you're further understanding who your customers or prospects are. And then also building on that further, you can also look at the way they behave with, in respect of um, the product or services that you're offering or similar products or, 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 products or services. And, and that's where the issue of the um, behavioral segmentation comes into play. How do they behave towards those products or services? Do they consume on a daily basis? Do they consume only at night? Those are things that you want to try and understand um, as you are trying to understand your customers. So putting all this together, putting the geographic segmentation together with demography, along with psychography, that is lifestyle or aspirations, along with their behavior towards the products or services that your business is offering, then enables you to begin to profile the customers or your potential customers. And so you profile them um, in such ways that gives you an understanding of the market and begins to clarify for you um, which your primary or your secondary target markets could be. 
And as you do that, you also want to understand if the segment that you are um, selling to or you want to sell to is such that you can easily service them. It's such that you have potential to grow your business and make money from that segment. And that's why the segmentation is important. So you could have about three or four options and you then analyze based on your goals, your business objectives on whether which of those segments would be most profitable for your business and most cost effective to service. And once you've done that, you then select the most attractive target market or target markets that you want to focus your marketing and business strategies on. And having done that, you then seek to further understand them. What's their behavior? What are their aspirations? How do they relate to products and services that are directly related to yours or others? So the more you understand your customer as an SME, the greater the potential for you to succeed. What market segmentation enables you to do is it puts the customer at the heart of your business and increases your chances of business success. Having decided on who your primary or secondary target markets are, you then need to build your value proposition. That is, what is it that you're offering? And let me quickly say here, that is not just about the product or service that you're offering. It's about the benefit that you're offering to the customer. When a customer, for example, says that he or she would like to buy bottled water, their real interest is not in the bottled water. Their real interest is what the bottled water would do for them. In this instance, it could be to quench their thirst. And therefore, when you are looking at what you're offering, what you should actually be focusing on is what is the benefit for the customer. If you happen to be a clothing retailer or own a fashion boutique, what you're offering is not just the dresses or the clothing. What you're offering to the customer is that desire of the customer to look good and feel confident. And therefore, your proposition, your positioning is what you're offering and how it will meet the needs, the desires of the customer or the prospect. And so constantly, you need to ask yourself as a business owner, what is the problem that you're solving on behalf of the customer? What is the solution that you are offering to the customer? Once you clarify that, it then enables you to build what your value proposition is to the target market. If there's a gap in the market, what is that gap that you're seeking to fill? And is there a market in that gap that enables you to make money on the short to long run? So building your value proposition requires you to understand what you are offering, what the benefit to the customer is, what is the solution that you're offering to the customer. And then also, you want to clarify what you want to be known for. Do you want to be known as, for example, the most affordable place to buy shoes? Do you want to be known for the best place that offers high quality jewelry? Those are things that you need to clarify for yourself, having clarified who your target market is. So how do you go about building your value proposition? You need to understand what others are offering and begin to look at identifying if there are gaps 
that your product or service can offer. And also be sure that the customer believes what you're offering and your credibility. And let me speak a bit about credibility here. Your positioning must be such that you constantly seek to fulfill the promise to the customer base. One of the sure guarantees to fail as a business owner, whether large, medium, or small, is if you don't live up to the business promise. So you must ensure that part of your proposition is such that you can fulfill it so that you build credibility to your business on the long run. So point of difference versus the point of parity, where the point of parity is just the basic expectation of the customer. So uh, a soft drink is meant to refresh. So every soft drink is meant to refresh. But the point of difference would be what is that unique offering of a particular soft drink that is different and perhaps better than another soft drink brand. And you can look at different ways of dimensioning um, the, your product or services. One way could be what the attributes of your service offering is. One way could be the benefits or the performance of the product or the services that you are offering. And then also see how is what you're offering as a business owner different or better than what other uh, businesses or competitors are offering. Effective positioning entails you being even more human-centric. That is placing, again, to repeat, placing the customer at the heart of your business. This photo on the slide shows a barber who understands his target market. Typically, when a, a man goes into the barber shop, because of, if you dare say, this need to constantly be in touch and be on the phone, if you need to type or chat on the phone while you're cutting your hair, you will be constantly need to interrupt uh, the barber from doing his job. But then this barber comes with this novel concept of having a transparent cover that this gentleman can chat away even when his hair is being cut. So ultimately, it's about putting the customer at the heart of the business, of your business. And it starts from mapping the customer, answering those six questions, and then segmenting the market to focus on the segments that will give you your greatest opportunity for profitable growth. As an example, in positioning, Gioni, many years ago, entered into the Nigerian market, realized that it couldn't compete effectively with brands such as Apple and Samsung, and looked for a gap in terms of what it to create as a positive perception in the Nigerian market, and came up with a concept of long-lasting batteries. And so while Juni may not be a small business, you as a small business owner or as an SME can take this learning. Look at the market, see what others are offering, see what gaps or needs are in the market, in the minds of potential customers, and then develop a proposition that can address that gap. That's what Gioni did, and it succeeded to a fair measure in Nigeria. Once you've segmented your market, you've selected certain segments to be your primary or secondary market, you have decided what your value proposition is, what you're offering to the market, you are then in a stronger position to develop products that meet expectations of your customers and prospects. It puts you in a stronger position to build your pricing strategy so that you don't get it wrong. 
because one of the things that can um, affect a business is when your pricing strategy is not, is not correct. As I gave earlier examples of maybe your pricing strategy is, is such that your price is too high for the target market that you have chosen. Clarifying your segmentation, target, and positioning then also helps you decide what your distribution strategy will be. How do you want to go about it? Are you looking at e-commerce? Are you looking at selling into um, supermarkets, brick and mortar, as it is called? And then also, what kind of promotions do you offer? What kind of communication do you do? So it's so important that before you um, put in place your uh, product development, your pricing strategy, your promotional strategy, your distribution strategy, that you go through the segmentation, targeting, and positioning process. And this final slide just reinforces that point. De develop and deploy your marketing mix, bearing in mind your segmentation, targeting, and positioning. On that note, I would end this presentation and hope that what I've said does make sense and that your few points that you can take and apply to your businesses. So here's to your business success. Thank you very much. Thank you.